Hey guys, Tuesday, February 8th, and I'm starting to record a little bit later today because, damn, I mean, just the data is not out there. I think there's a lot of people right now kind of standing and pausing that typically I would go to and, and start gathering information about what's forcing the market today, and there's very little available. I think everybody's kind of pausing to see what is driving things this morning, um, which makes sense because there's a lot of just a lot of things you can't put your finger on you can't really understand what's driving the thought processes out there you've got yesterday there was a, a, a some information that came out talking about where the fed is at and what they're they're talking about what they're doing with respect to the mortgage-backed securities and their purchases and their involvement in their and of course fed's talking about tapering pulling out so, you know getting out of their positions and all that and and trying to combat inflation that way but now they're still but they're still in it. They're still buying it. So it's kind of given a kind of false information, if you will, or or misinformation to the public and the, the traders out there. So there's people getting in and getting out and moving around in, in, in weird ways. So also seeing that um, people are also kind of trepidatious stepping into this week, the CPI numbers to be released and the anticipation is going to be 7.5%. Inflation just keeps going. It's not stopping. So one thing we do got to, got to remember is with inflation, everything's going to go up. Interest rates have to go up and they are going up. Let's take a look here. Let's look at the charts, guys. Let's see where we sit. I'm showing you the 3.5 coupon, which is where I focus on for the real estate investors right now. Um, and look at this. We're right now sitting where we were before the pandemic hit. So where's what? Let me scroll down so I can see exactly what day this was, or we're intersecting. We're intersecting February twenty eighth of two thousand twenty. Now that's the three point five. That's interesting. If you start looking at some of the other coupons, we're actually in a worse position. So you look at the three point oh. Look, we're intersecting during right where the just before the Fed stepped in. So that's later into March. We're talking about like March uh, probably. I would say somewhere in the range of the 17th, 18th year um, of 2020, you get into the 2.5, which is where you're getting your mortgage-backed securities for your for the homeowner uh, purchasing a home to live in. Look at this. We're getting right to the point where it's at its absolute worst position for the, Fed, the day before the Fed stepped in and started dumping in a trillion dollars. Right here is where they put a trillion dollars between here and here, that window. That's a trillion dollars worth of movement. Think about that. That happened back here where things started to fall off right? And we got below this point where I was cautioning about, and then we dropped. That's a trillion dollars worth of movement, basically. If we really want to try and figure out where the Fed came in and played here, actually, it's probably more up here. So several hundred billion dollars, maybe $800 billion worth of movement. I'm just spitballing, I'm guessing. Um, that's a lot that leaves the market, right? We're talking about an industry that just, you know, maybe what, uh, I'll have to look it up, maybe $2 trillion, $3 trillion a year, two th maybe $2 trillion a year, I'm guessing. I, I, I'm definitely spitballing this one. That could be half the volume of what we're talking about as far as the annual closings in the uh, in the U.S. So when you think about that, um, no wonder we're going to see some interest rates go up. And if people think that it's not going to go up, um, they're sorely mistaken on what their their um, their belief is. So being the fact that inflation is screaming up, right? Interest rates are going up, right? We're seeing that now. I mean, it's irrefutable. Um, Guys, it's a matter of just looking at the deal and don't look at the deal from the face of the, the performer that you're staring at. Look at it two, three years in, right? The ability to raise those rents, how does that influence it? I know that the, your cash flows for your first three year, probably not going to be what you're wanting, right? But what happens when you raise the rents 3% the second year? What happens when you raise them 3% the third year? Then where do you sit? Take a look at it from that perspective. Understand that you said that this is a long game. Understand this, you want to look 10, 15 years down the road before you really start understanding what your wealth is doing here. That's why we go into the app. That's why I tell you to go get the, you know, the QJO investment tool from your app store and understand how inflation is in, impacting that. The inflation number I'm using in there is 8%. We're sitting at 7.5 on the CPI. We know for a fact, when you go to the shadowstats.com, that uh, in fact, let's just go there and see where we're, we're, we're sitting right now and what... Um, what inflation is thought to be from uh, from John Williams himself, because I think we're in a lot worse position than what I just last looked. So I'm going to go ahead and do a screen share here. Let's take a peek at this. Look at where we're at now. Okay, we're, he's saying we bridged 15%. I think we. I would have thought we've gone further than that. Looks like we kind of 
tapered off here uh, at 15 is what they're claiming. So 15 plus is what, what makes sense to me, but we'll see how this all plays out and where we end up. Um, but ultimately guys, like I was saying, don't look at where you're at right now. Look at where you're going to be in a couple of years. I don't know any time that the rents went down. I know they flatlined from 12 to 13, 2012 to 2013, but they've continued to scream upwards ever since. So that being the case, that's how you need to measure your deal. Measure it for the first couple of years. Don't measure it for the first year. We're going to measure it two, three, four years in to see how that influences your payment and your cash flow and your ability to maintain that property. I will hopefully get some new, new, new data as the day goes on and have something more for you uh, come Friday. Thanks, guys.